All right, so here we've got an example. We've got the uh, triangle FGH. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a triangle here at random. So let's see. Let's label F, uh, G, and H. Okay, we want to find the side uh, length little h, so that'll be opposite the angle H. Uh, we're told that angle F has a measure of 40 degrees and uh, the side little f measures 10 centimeters. We're also told that the uh, side little g equals 8. Okay, so we're trying to find h, so we're going to have to do a couple things here again first. Um, we don't know its side length, we also don't know the angle that goes with it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the angle that goes with g, and again we can then uh, add those up, subtract it from 180, we'll get the angle for h. Uh, we can then find the side length, uh, little h, by doing that. So it's going to be my little, little plan of attack here. So okay, let's see, so um, again the first thing we're going to do is try to figure out angle g. So we can say sine of angle G over 8, that would equal sine of 40 degrees over 10. So now I'm simply just going to multiply uh, both sides by 8. So then we'll get sine of angle G equals 8 over 10, which is 4 fifths, times sine of 40 degrees. So let's see, um, so 4 divided by 5, that's simply just going to give us 0.8. So we'll get sine of g equals 0.8, and let's see, sine of 40 degrees, I'm going to round this here a little bit. Um, I'm getting that to be 0.643. So if we take 0.8 and multiply that by 0.643, um, I'm getting that to be 0.5144. So now I'm just going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So we'll get that angle G uh, is the inverse sine of 0.5144. So let's see. And I'm getting this to be roughly equal to 30.96 uh, degrees. I think I'm just going to round that off. That's pretty close to 31 degrees. All right, so angle G now has uh, a value of 31 degrees. Well, again, we know that if we add up the angles all together, they have to add up to 180. So 40 degrees plus uh, 31 degrees plus whatever angle H is, that's going to equal 180 degrees. Well, 40 and 31 is going to give us 71. If we subtract 71 from both sides, it looks like we'll get 109 degrees for H. So let's see if we can squeeze that in there. So that's 109 degrees. So now I'm just going to use the law of sines uh, one more time to figure out the value for uh, angle H here. So, <clears throat> all right, so we've got, um, so H over sine of 109 degrees, that would equal, it doesn't matter which one we use now, um, I'll just use uh, our side length of 10 over sine of 40 degrees. So we can multiply both sides by sine of 109 degrees. So let's see, sine of 109 degrees. And again, now it's just doing a little bit of arithmetic. So I think just a second ago, we, we said sine of 40 degrees. That was uh, 0.0, where'd it go? Um, we said 0.643. So uh, 0 0.643, let's see, we'll have to figure out sine of 109 degrees, so 109. Sine of that, I'm getting to be 0.946 after rounding. So let's see, 0.946, if we multiply that by 10, that'll give it, simply give us 9.46 over 0 0.643. <clears throat> So let's see, if we divide by 0 0.643, I'm getting that to be 14.71, roughly. 
So it looks like to me uh, this missing side H, that's going to be 14.71 centimeters uh, after we're all done. So again, it's just a bunch of just repeated uses here of the law of sines to figure out first the angle that's missing, and then we could use that to figure out the length of the side that we were missing.